create, compose, and direct collaborative work into poems that I call lyric fusion poetry. Most of my poems are accompanied by music, as you heard earlier. But I also work with film and theater. Simply put, I'm a poet who lives both on the page and as entertainment artist. <laughs> I'm like any other poet who composes words into meter, except I put my work through this process of improvisation, fusing phrases with melodies or images to deepen the impact of the emerging story. One of my favorite poets, Marvin Bell, said that poetry begins as a phrase or an image that creates emotional resonancy for an individual, and that the arts are about creating a language for that internal, that internal voice that we have. He goes on to say that there were no emotions no words for emotions until we created them through the arts. And I tend to believe him. My artistic process starts with insatiable curiosity. It drove my family crazy. Why, why, what? And then I'll put my work through a kind of a jazz gap by kicking around consonants and vowels, kind of like this. This phonetic exercise allows me to create wordless melodies that I then fuse with my words. I'll take them to collaborators, if there are any, and then we'll start composing around the music of the poem. Now, it can be difficult to separate music from song, even for an educated poet or musician, because we use the same terminology to describe both poetry and music. Tone, variation, form and harmony are all characteristics that both music and poetry share, but they speak entirely different languages. Lyric scholars believe that in the 14th century, melody split and created a carbon copy of itself with a slight variation, creating a double form of song called poetry. And these two identical twins have been fighting for dominance ever since. <laughs> Music says that poetry is ruining its reputation, while, while words will argue that music is powerless without them. Because when melody and words are harmonious, lyrical content makes the whole composition soar. Physically, it feels good to hear it. You can almost taste the complexities of it on your tongue when you sing it, even if you can't sing a note. It feels so good to sing. The entire body rejoices in the union of form and harmony. As a poet who sings, I gotta admit that these two Poetry and music have a very prickly relationship, and I'm very careful never to call a poem song or song poem. Let me back up for a second and give us a little perspective. The history of lyric fusion poetry, actually, or lyric poetry, begins in ancient Greece with Sappho. Then we see evidence of classical musicians like Beethoven, Franz Liszt, and Mozart collaborating with poets, improvising with poets. But because there wasn't any technology to really capture what they were doing, much of what they were doing is lost. But what we are left with is ritual music and tone poems or things that we call formal music. Jazz then resurrected improvisation and produced lyric poems that were informed by work songs, gospel music, the blues, sermon poems. And then decades later, we see 
pop and funk appreciating the serendipity of music and poetry. And here we are today, more musicians working with poets, producing works like the beat poets had, hip hop, slam poetry, all of these beautiful genres disguised as entertainment, but it's poetry, <laughs> it's literary competition. What, what, I, what I want to bring to you today is to let you know that there is amazing, there are amazing things that happen with music and poetry. We need music and poetry. We need more people to come and share their internal world with us. And there's few too, of a, too many of us actually sharing this kind of art. As far as the academic minds are concerned, words of music are still at odds. In lyric fusion poetry, which is what I do, well, there are few, too many criteria to define that as a new lyric art form. While trying to find my voice as a poet, I've had to endure scrutiny from both the music industry and the poetry scene. I heard, you can't sing your poems if you can actually sing. It's an unfair advantage. <laughs> or, I hear music in your poetry, but I can't quite hear it. <laughs> or, it's obvious that you got talent, kid. I mean, but this isn't a song. There are too many variations, and it's not sing-songy enough. We don't know where to put you on the shelves. But through all that, I was determined to find my voice. I remember when the day came when I was living here in Portland, Maine. I was laid out across my bed, staring at the ceiling, begging to be relieved from this travesty, separated from my one true love, music and poetry. I beg the universe, what is it that you want me to do? I will give it all up right now. I will go and do whatever it is that you need me to do. I will cook, I will clean, I will beg, I will do whatever I need to do. And the answer came back, if you would just be the poet and entertainer we created you to be, we'll take care of you. And Thank you. And from that moment on, it has become my quest to define, collect, and practice the art of lyric fusion poetry. When I said yes to my destiny, everything changed. When I said yes to overcoming any obstacles, things changed. When I said yes, I will face every rejection. Okay, maybe not every rejection. <laughs> I will kindly endure uncomfortable situations, yes. Every once in a while, I'll look at myself in the mirror and I'll say, are you gonna be okay, kid? <laughs> My answer is still yes. Let me share with you something that I've learned along the way. As a Buddhist, I've learned that Determination has a shelf life of about three days. <laughs> Every three days, I implore you, follow your dreams. I love to fix things. Clean them almost anything 
When I use as my elbow grease as things gonna get a little bit messy. Harness my artistic scars like an ox team. I and recede with a tough plow whatever tools I've got to borrow to dig up my sorrow I'm gonna call me a locksmith he's gonna give me my keys to posterity. But I'm an Amazon. I am an Amazon. I am an Amazon female masculine. That's how I identify myself. A new breed, a first generation immigrant, naturalized citizen. The river sea it flows through my pan. A new breed of South American Indian, an indigenous hedonist with light skin who just seems to fit in. I lived on the south coast, northwest to Ohio, but it seems I like Maine the most, where I can breathe easy and clean. French's point is like walking in a dream I've seen the sun rise on Cadillac Mountain Through all my troubles in Casco Bay Living life the way it ought to be In Portland, Maine This is an artist anthem of pure imagination Bouncing off cobblestone streets I hope you feel the connection Cause this is what living here has taught me to believe Take up as much room as you want to own. Swear to do your thing, do your thing. 